So welcome back to module 25, psychoactive drugs on our continuing conversation, I guess really me lecturing about <laughs> unit five states of consciousness. And this, um, these lectures are aligned to Meyer psychology for the AP course third edition. There are quite a few learning targets uh, for this module. The first one is to be able to describe substance abuse disorders. Next, to discuss the roles that tolerance and addiction play in substance abuse disorder, substance use disorders and how the concept of addiction has changed. Uh, you should be able to identify the depressants and their effects, the stimulants and their effects, and the hallucinogens and their effects. So what are psychoactive drugs and what is substance abuse disorder? So psychoactive drugs are chemical substances that alter perceptions and moods. Substance abuse disorders are disorders characterized by continued substance craving and use despite significant life disruption and or physical risk. Those are really good definitions to make sure you understand and remember. Tolerance is the diminishing effect with regular use of the same dose of a drug. So it's sort of if you start using alcohol, you kind of a need to drink more and more alcohol to have the same effect or whatever kind of drug, caffeine, whatever, um, you develop a tolerance. And it requires the user to take larger and larger doses before experiencing the drug's effect. Addiction is a primary chronic disease of brain reward, motivation and memory, and related circuitry. So addiction is characterized by the inability to consistently abstain, impairment in behavioral control, craving, diminished recognition of significant problems with one's behavior and interpersonal relationships, and a dysfunctional emotional response. So that was a lot of words about what addiction is. So I'm gonna say it again. It's um, sort of summarized it actually. Uh, characterized by inability to abstain. You have impair impairment and behavioral control, craving, diminished recognition of significant problems with one's behavior, and a dysfunctional emotional response. Despite these adverse consequences of using whatever drug, people in the grip of addiction want more of it. They want the drug more than they like the drug. How can tolerance lead to a substance abuse disorder? Due to neuroadaption, brain chemistry changes to offset the effects of a drug. So users are then require, will require larger and larger doses which then increases the risk of becoming addicted and developing a substance abuse disorder, as this image shows. You start needing more and more to have that same effect, which leads to the development of a substance abuse disorder. Now withdrawal is a discomfort and distress that follow discontinuing an addictive drug or behavior. And these are some different lifetime odds of getting hooked after using various drugs. So how's the concept, excuse me, of addiction change? Some behaviors can become compulsive and dysfunctional, similar to problematic alcohol and drug use. The DSM-5, the Diagnostic, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, um, fifth edition, classifies gambling disorder, but some behavior addictions require more studies, such as internet gaming disorder and internet use disorder. So there's still, you know, the jury's still out, so to speak, on what things can definitely be classified as a disorder. Psychologists try to avoid using addiction to label driven excessive behavior, behavior such as eating, work, sex, and accumulating wealth. So what are the three major categories of psychoactive drugs? This is really important to remember these three major categories, depressants, stimulants, and hallucinogens. And if you are taking the AP exam, here's a tip. The three categories, depressants, stimulants, and hallucinogens are important, as I said. They are likely to be questioned, there are likely to be questions in the AP exam that will require you to know how a particular psychoactive drug is classified and what the effect of that particular drug has on the body. So depressants are drugs such as alcohol, barbiturates, and opiates that reduce neural activity and slow body fun functions. So you can think, they, they depress, literally depress your body function. Alcohol is a CNS depressant, meaning it slows neural activity in the brain and the spinal cord. 
GABA, so how does an alcohol interact with neurotransmitters? Well, GABA, we've mentioned that earlier on in the biological basis of behavior units, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter, both interact with alcohol to produce the effects we associate with drinking. When alcohol enters the body, it acts as an agonist with inhibitory GABA receptors, making them more inhibitory. Alcohol acts as an antagonist to glutamate receptors and prevents glutamate from exciting the cell. So how does alcohol use disorder change the structure of the brain? MRI scans show brain shrinkage in large ventricles in women with alcohol use disorder on the left compared to women in a control group on the right, a woman in the control group on the right. How about reaction time? Slowed neural responses Resp slowed neural processing causes reactions to slow, speech to slur, and skilled performance to deteriorate. When drunk, people aren't aware of how drunk they are. And that has been shown in research. Virtually all drinkers who had insisted when sober that they would not drive under the influence later decided to drive home from a bar, even if given a breathalyzer test and told they were intoxicated, according to these two studies. How does all alcohol go about impairing memory and self-awareness? Well, in terms of memory, alcohol can disrupt memory formation and heavy drinking can also have long-term effects on the brain and cognition. Alcohol suppresses REM sleep, which is needed for memory consolidation. Um, in terms of reduced self-awareness, those who consume alcohol are more likely to be caught mind wandering yet not realizing they had. People who want to suppress their awareness or, of failures or shortcomings are more likely to drink. So as we talked about a little bit in some of the other modules, expectations influence behavior. Simply believing we're consuming alcohol has been shown that it can cause us to act out in alco as alcohol's presumed influence. Now barbiturates are drugs that depress CNS activity, reducing anxiety, but impairing memory and judgment. Barbiturates such as Nembutal, Secanol, and Amatol are sometimes prescribed to induce sleep or reduce anxiety. In larger doses, they can impair memory and judgment. If combined with alcohol, the total depressive effect on body functions can be lethal. Opium, uh, opiates, um, like opium and its derivatives, such as morphine and heroin, which are probably the ones you hear about most often, depress neural activity, temporarily lessening pain and anxiety. Um, as blissful pleasure replaces pain and anxiety, the user's pupils constrict, breathing slows, and the person becomes lethargic. Those who become addicted to this short-term pleasure may pay a long-term price, a gnawing craving for another fix, a need for progressively larger doses as that concept of tolerance develops in the extreme, extreme, extreme discomfort of withdrawal. So how can opiate addiction lead to death? When repeatedly flooded with an artificial opiate, the brain eventually stops producing endorphins, its own opiates. If the artificial opiate is then withdrawn, the brain will lack the normal levels of these pain-killing neurotransmitters. In recent years, more and more people have been unable or unwilling to tolerate this state and have, been, have paid an ultimate price, death by overdose. So what are, the stimulant, what are stimulants and what are their effects? So drugs such as caffeine, nicotine, and the more powerful cocaine, amphetamines, methamphetamine, and ecstasy that excite neural activity and speed up bodily functions. People use stimulants to feel alert, lose weight, or boost mood or athletic performance, like coffee here. Nicotine is a stimulating and highly addictive psychoactive drug found in, in tobacco. Tobacco products include cigarettes, cigars, chewing tobacco, pipe tobacco, snuff, and e-cigarettes. So let's look a little bit on the research on tobacco use. Smoke a cigarette and nature will charge you 12 minutes. Ironically, just about the length of time you spend smoking it. Compared with non-smokers, smokers' life expectancy is at least 10 years shorter. By 2030, annual tobacco deaths are expected to increase to 8 million. That means that 1 billion 21st century people may be killed by tobacco, according to the World Health Organization. How teens keep the cigarette industry in business. Virtually nobody starts smoking past the vulnerable teen years. Eager to hook customers whose addiction will give them business for years to come, cigarette companies target teens.
What are the physiological effects of nicotine? Nicotine reaches the brain within seven seconds, twice as fast as intravenous heroin. Within minutes, the amount in the blood soars. Cocaine is a powerful and addictive stimulant derived from the coca plant, produces temporarily increased alertness and euphoria. Cocaine is snorted, injected, or smoked. It enters the bloodstream quickly, producing a rush of euphoria that depletes the brain supply of neurotransmitters, of the neurotransmitters dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. So just a quick refresher from the biological basis of behavior unit. Uh, neurotransmitters carry a message from a sending neuron across a synapse to receptor sites on a receiving neuron. Remember, hopefully you're remembering this image to the right. What happens next? The sending neuron normally reabsorbs the excess neurotransmitter molecules, a process called reuptake. So how does co cocaine impact neural transmission? By binding to the sites that normally reabsorb trans neurotransmitter molecules, cocaine blocks reuptake of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. So how does this produce euphoria? Well, the extra neurotransmitter molecules remain in the synapse, intensifying their normal mood altering effects and producing a euphoric rush. When the cocaine level drops, the absence of these neurotransmitters produce a crash. Methamphetamines are a powerfully addictive drug that stimulates the CNS system with accelerated body functions and associated energy and mood changes. Over time, it appears to reduce baseline dopamine levels. So meth's after effects may include irritability, insomnia, hypertension, seizures, social isolation, depression, and occasional violent outbursts. And there are also some physical changes. In the 18 months between these two mugshots, this woman's meth use, her meth addiction led to obvious physical changes. How about ecstasy? It's a synthetic stimulant and mild hallucinogen. It produces euphoria and social intimacy with short-term health risks and long-term harm to serotonin producing neurons and to mood and cognition. Ecstasy, also known as MDMA, um, is an, as an amphetamine derivative, triggers dopamine release, but its major effect is releasing stored serotonin and blocking its reuptake, thus prolonging serotonin's feel-good flood. So let's look at the research on ecstasy. Ecstasy's dehydrating effect can lead to severe overheating, increased blood pressure, and death. Long-term repeated leaching of brain serotonin can damage serotonin-producing neurons, leading to decreased output and increased risk of perma permanently depressed mood. Ecstasy also suppresses the immune system, impairs memory, slows thought, and disrupts sleep. So hallucinogens, psychedelics, psychedelic drugs such as LSD that distort perceptions and evoke sensory images in the absence of sensory input. Um, so hallucin hallucinations are distorted perceptions and sensory images in the absence of actual sensory input. Near-death experiences are an altered state of consciousness reported after a close brush with death, such as cardiac arrest, often similar to drug-induced hallucinations in terms of what they feel like. LSD is a powerful hallucinogenic drug, also known as lysergic acid diethylamide. The emotions of an LSD trip vary from euphoria to detachment to panic. Users' mood and expectations, their high hopes, influence their emotional experiences, but the perceptual distortion and hallucinations have some commonalities. So marijuana, um, Cannabis is usually classified as a mild hallucinogen because it amplifies sensitivity to colors, sounds, tastes, and smells. But like alcohol, marijuana also relaxes, disinhibits, and may produce a euphoric high. Marijuana leaves and flowers contain THC, the psychoactive ingredient. Whether smoked or eaten, THC produces a mix of effects. And here's a, here's a good overview. I'm going to leave this up for a moment of the psychoactive drugs. Okay, back to our learning target reviews. So what are substance use disorders? Those with a substance use disorder experience continued substance craving and use despite significant life disruption and or physical risk. Psychoactive drugs are any chemical sub substances that alter perceptions and moods. 
What roles do tolerance and addiction play in substance use disorders? Well, psychoactive drugs may produce tolerance and withdrawal accompanying efforts to quit. Addiction prompts users to crave the drug and to continue use despite known, known adverse consequences. Psychologists try to avoid overuse of addiction to label driven excessive behaviors, right? Like uh, sex addiction or eating addiction, those kind of things. Um, psychologists try to avoid the overuse of the addiction label for those. Some behavior addictions in which behavior becomes compulsive and dysfunctional. So depressants such as alcohol, barbiturates, and opiates dampen neural activity and slow body functions. Alcohol disinhibits, impacts impulse control, impairs judgment, disrupts memory, reduces self-awareness and self-control. User expectations strongly influence alcohol's behavioral effects. Alcohol can shrink the brain in those with alcohol use disorder. Stimulants excite neural activity and speed up body functions. All are highly addictive. Nicotine's effects make smoking very hard to quit. Cocaine gives users a fast high followed shortly by a crash. Amphetamines such as methamphetamines may permanently reduce dopamine production and ecstasy produces euphoria and feelings of intimacy. Finally, hallucinogens distort perceptions and evoke hallucinations some of which resemble the altered consciousness of near-death experiences. LSD can produce hallucinations and emotions from varying, varying from euphoria to panic. Um, so varying from feeling really, really good to feeling really, really bad. Marijuana um, can, or cannabis has the main ingredient THC may trigger feelings of disinhibition, euphoria, relaxation, relief from pain, and other and chemotherapy, um, uh, nausea and intense sensitivity to sensory stimuli. So that is all, we went through those really quickly. <laughs> um, thank you for listening and take care.